Honda has released their 2023 models, and we're going to talk about them. This video is sponsored by Cruiseman's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different because it's too damn cold to get out and ride. It's about 25 degrees here in Dallas-Fort Worth. We have sleet, so I don't think I'll be out doing a moto vlog today. And I have had a few of you comment uh, on YouTube and Facebook and ask me what are my thoughts on the 2023 Honda lineup or Honda models in their lineup. So I thought, well, you know, it's cold out. I can't really do much. Let's just get in the studio and I'll pull up the Web Bike World website, which uh, is where I got an email the other day t talking about the 2023 lineup. And I'm just going to go through each of the different models and talk a little bit about my thoughts on these motorcycles. And uh, just if you like this kind of content, please do me a favor. Click that little subscribe button down below. Don't forget the notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. This is a little different. I don't usually do things like this, but I thought, what the heck, we'll just spend some time talking about these motorcycles from Honda 2023. And if you like this type of video, let me know in the comments down below, because I'll be glad to do this for other brands as well and go through their lineup and just kind of give you my opinion. I know you love my opinion. Everybody's got one, right? Okay, well, we've kind of beaten the whole Goldwing thing to death already. We've talked about the 2023 Goldwing. There's basically two versions, the the tour version that has the top box and the non-tour version, which is what some people call the bagger model. And I think the biggest disappointment for me uh, is that Honda limited the num the amount of colors, the color choices. And I'm sure it's a supply chain issue. I don't know. What do you think? Black and red is the only two colors for the Goldwing in 2023 on the Tour model. And I believe that the matte gray might be the only color available on the non-Tour model. I'm not a big fan of matte paint because I don't know how to take care of it. I don't know if you scratch it or scuff it, how you buff it out. I don't think there's a way to really correct the paint on a matte finish. I don't know. If you know, put it in the comments down below. That's why I'm not a big fan of the matte paint. Now, while we're talking about paint, actually, it's timely, because today we were supposed to be getting my new trunk painted, my 2021 trunk. I bought the whole kit to swap out the trunk on my 2018. And today was the day we were going to take it to get it painted to match my 2018, the pearl white. Unfortunately, the weather made that impossible because the highways are iced over and uh, it just wasn't going to be smart to try to get out on the highway today, go to Fort Worth. Let's go on down. Now, the next thing that Honda has is their adventure series. I'm just going down the website from Web Bike World. Make sure you check out their website if you want to see all these models and read a little bit about each one. I'm not going to read everything about these different models. I'm just going to tell you kind of what I think at a glance, what I think they look like. Is this something I would consider? Now, Honda in their Adventure Series, the top of the line adventure bike is their Africa Twin. And this starts at $14,500. It's only available in red. I'm not as huge a fan of the look of this uh, paint scheme as I was in the past years, but it's okay. It's it's not bad. I actually, at one point, was sort of in the market for an adventure bike. I thought that's something I might like to have because I used to ride off-road when I was younger. However, I'm not really sure my back could take off-road riding again. And to me, it's kind of a waste to have an adventure bike if you're just going to ride around town. But nevertheless, I do like the looks of the Africa Twin. Once again, not crazy about the color scheme here, but it's I'm sure it's personal taste. Some people will look at this bike and absolutely love it. The next one is their Africa Twin Adventure Sports ES. And this one has a little more of that, <clears throat> that red, white, and blue look that I kind of like. And you can get this in a DCT. Now, this jumps the price up to about $18,100, but I love the fact that you can get the DCT in the Africa Twin 
And if I were going to get an adventure bike, that might cinch it for me. Just the fact that you can get a DCT. Now, Honda refers to this NC750X as an adventure bike, I guess, because it looks like it's in that category on the website. But to me, it looks like a little street bike because it's got street tires. And it's got the low fender in the front because I don't think the NC750 would be considered an adventure bike. They also have the CB500X as an adventure bike. At least it's listed that way on their website. Neither one of these bikes to me look like adventure bikes. After my studio recording, I went back and looked at the Honda website and I noticed the Africa Twin also has that lower front fender, which I'm kind of surprised. I thought an adventure bike would have a higher fender to prevent mud and junk from collecting between the tire. So my bad, maybe adventure bikes do have a low fender. I like the NC750X. This is a motorcycle I would actually consider buying. I think it would make a great second bike for the Goldwing. It'd be a great go-around town bike. I like the fact that it's got that little trunk where the gas tank looks like it is. I think the real gas tank's under the seat. But the uh, what looks like the gas tank, you can lift it up and store a helmet in there. You could put groceries in there. You could actually run some errands. And I think they make panniers for this bike. So you could even have a little more storage. I don't know. I just think it's a neat looking bike. You can get it with a DCT. I think it's about 9500 bucks. It's just, I don't know, it's just a cool looking motorcycle. In fact, I think it only comes in DCT now. So for $9,400, you can get this little bike. It's a parallel twin that's very, uh, leans very far forward to keep that, uh, you know, center of gravity lower. I don't know, it just looks like a neat bike. Do any of you out there own one of these 700 uh, NC700s or NC750s? I actually like the blue. They call it matte nightshade blue. It only comes in one color this year. I think it's a good looking bike. I even like the looks of the muffler. I think the muffler's kind of neat looking. Now, the CB500X has kind of a similar look, um, but it's a different twin. It's more of an upright parallel twin. And still a good-looking bike. Um, just looking at it, it comes in kind of a green and black, I guess. It's kind of a two-tone. I think a 500cc engine is probably about the smallest displacement I would consider for just a ride-around-town kind of bike. I don't think I'd want to take it on the highway for a long distance. Now, we get into the cruisers, and this is where I kind of uh, lose interest in the Honda lineup because I'm not a fan of the Rebel. I'm not a fan of the looks. I just, to me, it looks kind of awkward. It looks like they kind of tried to make it look like a chopper or a bobber. You know, it has a look I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people, but it's just not for me. They make it in an 1100. They make it in a 500 and I believe a 300. And they all look the same. They all have the same look, different colors, different prices. But um, they just don't do anything for me, and I don't like that big t-shirt cannon muffler sitting off to the side. Tell me what you think. I also don't like the big fat tires, especially in the front. So I don't know. I don't know. It just has, to me, it has a kind of an awkward look. It just doesn't do it for me. Now, the next one I really find to be a mystery, and that's the Honda Fury. I was shocked when I saw this on the website. Because I think they came out with the Fury back when American Chopper was still pretty popular on TV. And everybody was into choppers. But they needed, you know, Honda felt like they needed something kind of raked out front end. But does anybody buy these anymore? Is anybody buying? I mean, I just don't know. Is this still popular, this chopper craze? Maybe it is. I, I don't think I've ever seen a Honda Fury on the road. I don't think I've ever seen one out when I'm riding around. Uh, I've seen the old VTXs, you know, the VTX 1800s, the VTX 1300s, or maybe there was a VTX 1100, I don't know. This looks like the same engine as the old VTX engine, so this might be the VTX 1300 engine. And then we get down to the Honda Shadow Phantom. Now, this is not a bad looking bike. This kind of has that Harley look to it. Uh, I like the way they did the mufflers. I like the pipes. It's got kind of, it's, it does have a V-twin engine. Looks like the air cleaner's right there on the side. Very easy to service. Uh, I think if somebody's interested in a V-twin motorcycle, this might be a very good choice. But you want something maybe a little more reliable 
than the traditional, say, Harley or other uh, V-twins out there, maybe less expensive to maintain. Bike only sells for seventy-nine, you know, eight thousand dollars, eight thousand bucks. It's only available in two colors: adventure green or matte black. They also have a Honda Shadow Arrow. Now, this is more of a what I would call a dressier looking bike, kind of like a uh, Heritage Classic because it's got those big fender skirts. It's okay. It's it's not my style bike, but it's a good looking bike. It comes in kind of a blue with looks like it has either a white or silver little treatment on the tank. Again, more of a traditional V-twin styling. Now we get into what Honda calls their standard lineup of motorcycles. And the first one is the CB1000R. And I'm going to call this a naked sport bike. First impression, I like the looks of it. I think it's a good looking bike. It does look like it's available with a quick shifter. It comes with Honda's selectable torque control. It has LED lighting, obviously. I kind of like the muffler. I think what they've got going on with the muffler, kind of hidden, really. You really don't even see it with that rear tire. This is a nice looking bike. It looks, it's probably uncomfortable as hell because it looks like a pretty small seat. But uh, it's a good looking bike. I don't, I don't have a problem with the looks of it. Now, they've also got a CB650R, they call CB650R ABS, and this has the four-cylinder 650 engine. I'm assuming it's the same engine that's in their 650 sport bike lineup, but I can't confirm that. You probably can. Somebody out there will know the answer to that. What I love about the looks of this bike is I love that little shorty muffler, that little compact muffler sitting off to the side. This looks like a cool bike. This looks like one that if I were 10 or 15 years younger, I might actually consider something like this. It's like a little cafe racer style. And uh, it's got a 31.9 inch seat height. So it's approachable, only 445 pounds. Should be very, very easy to ride. Just looks like a fun bike. Now they've also got the CB500F kind of in that same range, that naked sport bike look. This is a twin, that upright parallel twin. So I think it's probably going to have a little bit more, uh, it's going to be a little bit more top heavy. I am not as big a fan of the looks of this bike as I am the 650. I like that four cylinder in the 650. And I like the shorty muffler on the 650. This one has that big t-shirt cannon on the right side. Nah, I'm just not a fan of the muffler. Uh, but again, it's a less expensive bike, same styling, similar styling. Okay, now let's get down to the CB300R. Again, it's got that upright. This, I believe, might be, is it a twin or single? I like the looks of this bike. Not a huge fan of the muffler, but I, I do like the yellow. I love that that pearl dusk yellow, they call it. They also make it in a matte black, which nah, I would like the yellow. This I could see being a first bike for somebody, a young guy that maybe wants something a little sportier, doesn't want that Honda Rebel look. They want something a little cooler looking. Now we get into the super sports, and these are the track bikes. These are the all out, in my opinion, kind of race bikes. I can't even, I couldn't even get on one of these. If I put my feet on the pegs and tried to sit on that, my back would be screaming before I got out of the parking lot. Yeah, they're cool looking bikes, but these are race bikes. These are bikes you take to the track, and that's just not my style of riding. But these are high-end, very sophisticated electronics, very sophisticated suspension. Then we get into the sport bikes. Not the super sport, but just the sport bikes. They do have a CBR650R, which does look like that same four-cylinder engine that we talked about in that previous model, which I really liked on the naked bike. And they also have a 500R with ABS. And then finally, the CBR300R, which I'm assuming is a single cylinder. I still don't know why it has to have such a big damn muffler. A lot of guys that like sport bikes, the young guys, first bike. I can see it being popular. It's under $5,000. Now we get into the Mini Motos, what Han, what they're referring to as Mini Moto. And this is a class that kind of interests me. I don't know why. Maybe because my roots, when I started riding, I started out on mini bikes. That little Honda Grom, I still think is a cool looking motorcycle. They're up to about $3,500 now. I think when they first came out, they were maybe $2,900. So they've gone up. 
I would probably lean more toward the Honda Monkey, which is like the old, kind of has the same style as the old Trail 50. This is a 125, but it has that very retro look to it. Looks like, got some serious tires on it. Looks like these are street trail tires. So this looks like something that you could probably take off road and do pretty well with. I just love the looks of it. And then we get to the Honda Super Cub. This obviously is the uh, retro look from the old Honda 50 Cub. I think they're kind of cool looking. I don't know if I would buy one because they look like something that a college kid would drive around campus, especially a, a girl. I think this, you know, I don't know why I look at these and I think of girls riding them. It only comes in the gray metallic, which I don't like. I think I would have liked the red or the blue better. Now, the one I might consider that's kind of along the same vein is the Honda Trail 125 ABS, because this reminds me, back when I was riding mini bikes, this reminds me of the old Trail 90. They had one that looked almost identical to this. It had that little single seat, had the, had the luggage rack in the back, had that high muffler coming up the right side. I personally think this is a tough looking little bike and it's got tires and you could take it off road. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blaze any trails like Itchy Boots does. But if I wanted to get off on a dirt road and have just a little bit of fun. Anyway, I just think it's a cool looking bike. I love the fact that they left the Kickstarter on too. So you can still kick it over to start it. I don't know. It's just a neat looking bike. Now this Honda Navi, mixed emotions on this motorcycle. It's not something I would buy. It really does look like something more a kid would ride. 1800 bucks. I mean, yeah, give me a break. It's got a 109cc engine. And then we get into Honda's dual sport lineup. I'm going to skip over the dual sport lineup because I never could get the information on the Web Bike World website to coincide with what I could find on the Honda website. So I'm not really sure which models for 2023 are available and which ones aren't. It's a little bit confusing. So I'm just going to kind of skip this whole area. And now we talk about Honda's scooter lineup. I'm trying to think if I've ever even ridden a scooter. I don't think I have. The ADV 150, uh, I think it is, as a scooter goes, I think it's pretty cool looking. I think they're trying to make it a, like an adventure scooter. $4,300, not bad looking bike. 150cc engine. Um, then the Honda P, uh, PCX, which has been around for quite some time. To me, it just looks like a scooter. It just looks like a Honda scooter. It's nice looking. $38.99. And then the Honda Ruckus. Yeah, if I was young, if I was in my 20s, I could see maybe wanting something like that just to run around in. It's only 50 cc's for $3,000. I'd much rather have the monkey, spend the money and get the monkey. And then that Honda Metropolitan, which has got to be the most boring looking scooter, is kind of trying to look like a Vespa, I think but it doesn't quite get there. You see these everywhere in Europe. They're all over the place and they all look like this. And, you know, they're just little get around town bikes. So there's your 2023 Honda lineup. What motorcycles do you wish Honda had kept in the lineup or added to the lineup? I would like to see a pearl yellow Goldwing. I loved my very first Goldwing pearl yellow. I think it's a great color. I'd love to see Honda do something interesting with colors. That's it for my take on the 2023 Honda motorcycle lineup. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do more of these for other brands. Would love to know. Thanks for joining me. And remember what I always say. I don't care what you ride. I don't care what brand you ride or what model you ride. Ride often, but ride safe. <music>